Hi everybody, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Today we are going to do this beautiful spiral painting called Desert Sunset. I just love the colors in this particular one and um, uh, we'll do some special color mixing and you'll get a chance to see how it all comes together. Before we get started with the painting, I wanted to show you and talk a little, show you a couple of color sites, uh, color palette sites, and then talk a little bit about choosing colors because I know a lot of us struggle with that. I certainly do. This first one is called colorpalettes.net and it's a really fun site, it has lots of great color palettes and you can choose by a variety of, of color options. The second one is called Design Seeds. It's just a beautiful, beautiful site. Um, great photographs and they've taken those photographs and converted them to a series of color palettes and you can easily match uh, your paint or mix paints. Um, on this particular site you can choose by color, by collection. Here's what it would look like if you were to choose a color. This is violet and you can just go in and see all the beautiful combinations of colors that you can use. For this painting I use the colorpalettes.net and I choose, chose this palette. It's just gorgeous. And I converted it to these deco art paints, which I like. So I've got, you know, the turquoise and the violet and um, the, actually it's a fuchsia and an orange. And then I've got my regular tools and a 10 by 10 canvas. Here's my canvas layout. It's an eight uh, quadrant grid. And I did put circles on it six and nine because I, six inches and nine inches, because I really want to make sure that I don't go over the edge of the painting with the um, final elements. So in this particular one, we're doing the spiral. And I know a lot of us have struggled with that. It took me a while to figure this one out. So I want to share a few tips with you. You'll see that I put my first dot down. And then I'm using um, a smaller one of the nail dotters to put my first eight in my first color. This is just a two color spiral. I put my, eight, my first eight uh, dots down. And then I'm going in and I'll put the second color in. Now, Right here it's a little bit hard to see. I'm using um, the Spice Pumpkin and um, the Fuchsia color, but I'm going to ultimately end up with 16 dots. So put my first eight and then go in between with my second color. I think one of the keys to getting a good spiral is to start small. So start your dots with a fairly small dotter um, so that you can get a good number. And then we're just going to go in between each of those dots, alternate the colors. So if I put down a spot, an orange, I'm going to go in between, as you can see here, with orange. And then I'll just move over so that I'm offset against the previous orange. And I'll just keep going all the way around. Now I will repeat a couple of rows with the same tool, same size tool. And what you'll have to do is kind of, because we all dot a little differently, apply pressure differently and make different size dots. So what I would suggest you do is, um, what I would suggest you do is, is um, just kind of take it, your dry tool and fit it in there and see if you think it's going to fit. And I would keep it fairly tight and small to begin with. So in this particular one, I'm actually going to do couple of rows of the same size and slowly grow the size of my dots. Now I'm moving up a little bit and I'm not moving up a lot in size um, and if I need to I'll put another you know a little extra bit of paint and double dot it to make it a little bit bigger. But I think as I said the key is to start small and to slowly expand the size of your dots as you move outward in the pattern. So this is um, very repetitious. It's easy to get a little bit confused, so I'd go slow. But you can see that um, I just use the same color next to for each row. As I go up, I'm using the same color in between. And I'm going to start to speed up here a little bit because it, it is very repetitious. But I really love the spiral. It's really basic and you can really embellish it beautifully with the patterns that you might add at the edge. I called this one Desert Sun, uh, Sunset. I actually uh, lived in the Southwest. I consider Phoenix my home uh, and lived in, in the Southwest. And I remember it took me a long time to really uh, love, learn to love the desert, but I grew to love it. I think the cactus are beautiful. I think the flowers. Uh, when the desert's in bloom is absolutely gorgeous. So 
these colors really remind me of the uh, desert flowers that bloom. So I will keep building on this pattern. You can start to see the spiral slightly. Um, it's still not as apparent as it will be in the next few rows. But we'll just keep dotting. If you make a mistake, don't forget, you could just go back with a Q-tip and wipe it out. And now the pattern's starting to grow. I've moved up now to a little larger nail dotter. You see I'm still using the smallest of my tools. And I think you're really starting to see that pattern grow. I think when you're starting out, it might be best and most helpful if you started this particular pattern with um, just a couple of colors and then as you get more experienced and more confident in the pattern, you know, then you can add lots of different colors. Um, I also wanted to share with you that I will have a pattern in my Etsy store for this particular design and um, uh, if you're interested, if you'd like to see uh, the pattern, you know, just hop on over there and check that out. And as I mentioned, I'm using often the same tool in a couple of rows. I'll just uh, drop a little bit more paint either by double um, dotting it or by making sure that I have quite a bit of paint loaded onto the tool. Now I've moved up to the smallest crochet hook, which, which is the G four millimeter. And you can start to see the colors are now, because the pattern's a little bit bigger, you can see the colors more easily. And now we'll go in with that fuchsia. These colors are really pretty together, and I think it's really helpful if you uh, do want to experiment with different colors, or you feel a little bit... Um, confused about what colors to use that you go out to one of those color palette sites and just find some images that are beautiful to you and they're automatically converted so you'll easily be able to find paints that um, that are close. Now I've moved up to the H8 five millimeter hook and I think you can see how that's a nice easy progression the size doesn't jump too much and I'll use that for a couple of rows. Again, um, if I want to make that slightly larger, I might double uh, dot it or uh, make sure that I've got a lot of paint loaded on there so I can increase the size slightly. I'm still not touching all the way down to my canvas though, right? I'm just sort of transferring the paint by lightly, by lightly touching the canvas. And now I've moved up another size. I'm in J10, which is the six millimeter. Oop, missed one. And again, I've moved up for the K 10.5, which is the 6.5 millimeter. You can really start to see that fire, that spiral now. Okay, and now I've moved up again. I'm using the L11, which is the eight millimeter. And I've moved up a size to the M13 9mm. Just taking it slow and moving up slowly in size. Now I primarily go, you know, when I'm dotting, I use the these um, crystallite crochet hooks. And I don't usually go too 
um, much bigger than that. Sometimes I have some wooden dowels that are slightly bigger. Uh, you saw I made a little boo-boo there, so just keep your Q-tips handy. And now I've moved up again. I'm using the size N15, the 10 millimeter crochet hook. And I'm almost out to that outer edge. I'm you just using those uh, circular uh, line uh, grid marks as um, guides. I will go over it slightly. Now I've moved up to my largest crochet hook, which is the P16, the 11.5 millimeter. And you can see I'm slightly over that six uh, inch mark six inch uh, circle and again I only put the circle marks on there just so um, really I know where the edge of my pattern was so I could stop before I, I didn't want to go over the edge I wanted to actually keep it within um, you know an inch of the edge of the canvas okay now um, what I did here is I mixed a little bit of paint. I took the um, Spice Pumpkin and that fuchsia and I just swirled them together. I didn't mix them completely. I just swirled them though so that I get a little bit darker color there. And it's kind of nice because it's a little bit variegated. So it gives it a really fun look. And I'm still using the P16 11.5 millimeter hook to put um, those next row, next row of dots on. And I've gone all the way around. So this time I'm not alternating the color. I'm still using uh, this mix that I did the swirl. Now I've swirled a little bit of cad yellow with that um, fuchsia. Again, I'm not mixing it. I'm just kind of swirling it. And you can see that it gives a nice swirl pattern. And that's what I'm going to use to now dot uh, to start my first edge. And I will just use the largest nail dotting, not nail dotting stylus, and I will walk the dots around. I do one side, and then I dot the middle again to drop off some, transfer some paint, and I walk it around the other side. I'm just finding the center, and then walk those dots around. Really sped this up here, though, and I will do each one of those. We're up to the last one. And I'll finish up the other side. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to change the pattern slightly. See how that's starting to really come together? It's starting to get a really pretty look. So I'm using my um, G6 four millimeter crochet hook and I'm dropping two large dots uh, right above that center there, center dot in between the, the edge and I'll do that all the way around. And I'm going to alternate how I walk the dots. So I'm going to be walking from this larger dot up to the top. And you'll see me do that here in just a minute. Largest nail dotter. And you'll see that I'm just doing the reverse walking the dots. and that's just giving me a little bit of variance on the design. And now I'm going to add the crown and I'm going to go in with this is the um, G6 four millimeter, and I'm gonna put three crown, I'm calling them crown dots. 
So two pretty close to each other and then one on uh, top of those two, right above those two. See how pretty that paint is? It's very, it's really pretty when it dries. It's got a nice variegated look. And now I'm going in with my largest nail dotter and I'll just walk the dots back around. And we're coming up to the last one. And that finishes the first of two outside edge rows. I'm going back in with that same mix of the fuchsia and the spice pumpkin with my P16, which is the 11.5 crochet hook, and I'm just putting a dot right in between those two uh, crown dots, crown el design elements, and I'll put those all the way around. And I will go in then and I will walk dots around. Find the center and walk them all the way around. And here's the last one. And now to fill in a little bit, I'm putting, uh, I'm using the, um, the G6 four millimeter and I'm just putting a dot um, right in that little um, dip. And now I'm gonna put my crown dots on, two fairly close together and one right above. And I will walk those dots around. Here's the last one. And now I'm ready using the largest of my nail dotters, walking them around. Now one thing that I do, um, Sometimes um, as you're walking the dots, they're not always the same on each side. And um, I do sometimes go in with a smaller tool and just finish them up and even them up a little bit uh, so that I get a nice look. And, and that's how the piece is looking so far, desert sunset. And here's a little close up of some of the design elements. I love the way that variegated paint looks on the outside edge. It really has a lot of dimension and uh, difference in the colors. Now it's all dry and I'm going to go ahead and use some top dots and I decided I was just going to top dot with gold. So uh, I'm just finding a tool that's smaller than um, the base dot and I'm just starting to apply my top dots. Um, I have taken off the lines. I've removed the chalk pencil. Uh, before I started this dotting so I didn't have to disrupt any of the painting and I've gone ahead and I've dotted each one of those I think it's just beautiful it's so pretty and it really does remind me of desert flowers so there's a top view here's a little close-up of the design here's how it looks on a, a nice stand and I had tried another pattern. I was actually going for a cactus look with that green one. I don't know how successful that was, but I really did enjoy doing it. I want to thank you for joining me in my studio. I hope you enjoyed this project. Don't forget to check out the pattern if you're interested in that. Um, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, ask a question. I really enjoy hearing from you. Let me know what kinds of other projects you might be interested in seeing. Thanks for joining me in my studio. Take care.